Hello, this is Hakan Bean, and today we are going to be reading some more of the Amani Ram SCP-001 proposal by Dr. Rounderhouse. I mean, Rounderhouse's gold. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Upon debriefing of Miguel and team, and a series of subsequent expeditions to ascertain the area's safety and the uh, uh, solidity of SCP-001-A instances, it was proposed that long-term research outposts be established inside SCP-001 to study the history of Amani Ram, the then unmapped Undercity and SCP-001-A. Attached document is the Council Votes Summary, where in summary, Council Members 051, 053, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 12, and 13 said yes, 052, 7, and 8 said nay, and 0511 decided to abstain. Status, this decision was approved. 43 researchers were flown in from various sites and departments, primarily specializing in archaeology, history, anomalous or otherwise, and paratechnology. Accompanying them was a 15-man and tactical response team in India 3 Cherno. As augmented personnel were still common within the Foundation at the time, liberals with complex prosthetics, bionics, and implants were favored, both due to the relative ease of accessing SCP-001, and for further study of the unexplained connection to SCP-001-A instances. I mean, the connection is pretty clear if you know anything about the Church of the Broken God, which I think I've covered on this channel before. Two colleagues were, for, were selected for this project. Dr. Robert Aram and Dr. Hedwig Ignatzbaum. And we're going to read their information now. Dr. Ro Robert Aram, age 33, physician, senior researcher in the paratechnology department, special consultant on anomalous robotics, education, PhD in Domicatronics from ICSUT 3 Portlands. Previous assignment, consulting on anomalous technology recovered from Group of Interest Prometheus Labs Incorporated. Employment Summary. Left previous employer, Prometheus Lives Incorporated in 1979 over a salary dispute, accepted an attractive heavy recruitment offer from the Foundation later that year, and was brought in to consult and advise on anomalous objects recovered from his previous workplace. He distinguished himself with superior periodical knowledge and skill in handling paratechnology, he promoted a senior researcher in 1982. Other notes. Left arm and leg amputated below the elbow in the following laboratory accident. And after me, yes. Replaced with high quality anomalous prosthetics that allow fine rotor movement and limited tactile sensation. Due to his defense on them to function in the workplace, they have not been placed into containment and are in his full time custody. Dr. Hedwig Nussbaum. Oh, yeah, by the way, I don't know if these are like real people, and uh, they are consenting to this, but if they aren't, I'm not responsible for this. I do not claim to own these pictures or know who, who even these people are. Dr. Hedwig Nussbaum, age 43, physician, researcher with Pair History A Division, special consultant on anomalous cult and cultures, education, PhD in archaeology at University of Oslo. <sighs> Previous assignment, cataloging anomalous objects recovered in the possession of SCP-1867. Employment summary, recruited out of graduate school at 32 in 1972, junior researcher on various his programs until 1983, promoted to full researcher with level 3 clearance upon her discovery of a complex 
of anomalous runes in sub-Saharan Africa. A scientist assists with cataloging and identification of the large amount of anomalous artifacts discovered in SCP 1867's vault when she discovered the references to SCP 001. Other notes, non-invasive ocular implant, allowing hands-free visual communication and overlay, as well as general access to foundation and databases. <sighs> All personnel selected were introduced through SCP-001 with substantial supplies and equipment, and organized a provisional old dormitory and research facility in the temple and palace complexes exited in ARF-01. The temple itself? Huh, that's free. It, it, it is stupid. Don't go into holy places, you know? SCP-001-A instances appeared intrigued by the new arrivals and approached to investigate for the interest shortly thereafter. Researchers were organized primarily into two groups. An engineering team headed by Dr. Aram to investigate the technology of Amani Ram and SCP 001A instances, and an anthropological team headed by Dr. Nussbaum to investigate the history, culture, and ultimate fate of the Mechanite and Empire. A general directive was given for all researchers and tact tactical response officers to avoid the subterranean undercity until, until a detachment from, the, from MTF. Z9 mole rats could arrive to map it out and declare it safe for study in the meantime. And both groups began investigating the rest of the service and compiling preliminary reports. Attached document from September 1983. From the desk of Robert Aram. Preliminary notes on a pair of technology of Amwani Ram. I've encountered. <clears throat> I've encountered many strange, unique things over my career at Prometheus and the Foundation, but I can firmly state that I've never seen anything quite as magical as Amani Ram. So far, we've only been able to investigate the machinery on the surface of the city. I'm told the real treasure is under the streets, but obviously we can't explore that right now. Which appears to be largely concentrated in the upper floors of the, of the skyscrapers. Though I think calling them skyscrapers is an understatement. Each is about 500 meters, a little taller than Sears Tower. A marvel of engineering in and of itself, but not an obviously anomalous for one. What they contain, however, is a different story. From my layman's perspective, they appear to be a combination of residential, office, and bureaucratic buildings. Each floor seems to consign itself to one of those three types, and contains appropriate pieces of technology. Most are too degraded to be useful, but the fact that they're there at all, thousands of years after thousands of years, is, is incredible. I can discern the purposes of a bad of quarter of them, though. They're all anomalous to some extent. The drones are writing up detailed reports now, but they variously they break laws of of thermodynamics, physics, and matter conservation. And often simply use magic to do things as mundane as copy documents or keep food hot or cold. Here is a an SCP-001 instance. Hmm, looks pretty cute. And of course the automata, little machines made of gold and metal and built to resemble animals that this culture in the middle of the desert could have no possible way of knowing about. Definitely sentient, possibly satient, fully mechanical. I found a broken open one on the street and took it as a sample, picture attached, but demonstrated hitting what looks to me like primitive artificial intelligence. There must be hundreds of them at least. My guess is that they were designed to maintain the city and for the millennia it's laid in bed and they've been doing exactly that. They're pretty cute to be honest. Hey, that's what I said. Whatever this civilization was, the anomaly is, was so pedestrian to them, they were using paratechnology we even now barely understand as household appliances and servants. They were playing with nuclear reactors while the rest was huddled in caves behind the fire. 
If this is any indicator of what lies below the streets, a monogram might be the key to pushing humanity into the future. Another document from the same time, from the desk of Dr. Hedwig Nussbottom. Personal thoughts on the historical potential of Amani Ram. I have to continually pinch myself to make sure I'm not dreaming. A vast city undocumented by anyone else in the modern area. Hiding a culture that had blended advanced magic and technology to settle half of Asia while the Egyptians had yet to sell the Nile. If the evidence wasn't surrounding me, I'd call myself a liar. We've already discovered much. Some of the researchers are more interested in investigating the individual houses and homes to see what an average citizen lived like. Completely understandable. That said, I'm far more intrigued by this cult of Meccan that seems to pervade every aspect of Amani Ram. It seems like the Foundation did not quite know the history of uh, the Church of the Broken God back, back in the 80s. And the ruins of Sumer and other ancient cities, religious iconography is common. Here it's ubiquitous. The palace temple is the most obvious example of this, with mechanical bas reliefs that seem to tell a creation myth laid throughout. The buildings, houses, shops, skyscrapers, even the machinery of Robert Seaman's disassembly have this religious significance about them. Which makes me feel really, which makes me feel like it should be a little bit weird to be disassembling the machines. It's especially fascinating since practically nothing else is known about it, known to us about the religion or culture of these Mechanites beyond the admittedly questionable statements of Lord Blackwood. Even the name Mechanite is a Greek epithet at using the Achaean tablets. The root, the root, the root of the of Mechain machine, as it stands, their culture is a black box, and even with the murals and paintings, I doubt we will ever have more than a black. More than an, an, uh, a passing understanding of this once great civilization and what happened to them. Oops, I almost, uh, almost read the same sentence again. <sighs> oh, I just screwed something up. That's my bad. Oh, well, that works. MTF said a 9 fire team Echo passed through SCP-001 and arrived in Amani Ram on September 6 with no complications. The next day, they prepared themselves for insertion into Amani Ram's undercity and a controlled exploration. All members, along with their individual digital augments and implants, equipped with ochlear topological mappers, devices that use hyper the echoing sound waves to construct maps of subterranean and areas. Attached transcript from September 1983. Begin log. Echo 1. Echo 1. Beginning off. Inserting into a monogram subterranean zone from um, entrance alpha in your home base. Looks dark down there. Night vision? Sounds good. Members of Echo Team activate at night vision and under ocular implants. Here we go, descending now. Members of Echo begin going down the stairwell. You have to describe to us what you're seeing, Echo. Not much, not much right now, just stairs. Kind of fancy stairs, marble or something. Not exactly what you'd use for industrial applications. Might not be an industrial area at all. They continue to descend before their revelation and, and stabilizes. Alright, we appear to have reached the bottom. It should say we are 25 meters below ground. We're in some sort of corridor. Walls are sewn, but there's some pipes in every direction. There's a couple of paths we, we could take. Taking the first left, left hand rule, 
leave a marker trail. And here's a still image. Pretty interesting. Echo Team begins walking down the corridor, periodically marking the wall with red paint. It's wide enough to, to, to comfortably accommodate all of them. Looks like there's lights on the walls. Non-functional though. I see something up ahead, I think. Down on the left. Yep, eyes up, boys. Echo Team of advances into the room. Clear. Looks like some sort of foundry. Command. And a huge room. Assembly line. Lots of big machinery. Most of it looks trash, though. Taking photos. The techies will love this. Another still image. Team moves around the room, collecting evidence and surveying the area. Let's not spend the day down here, folks. Keep moving. Yep, packing up now. Onwards and downwards. The team exits the room, continuing on their path. The corridor gently slopes downward. Descending again. Air quality degrading. Nothing anomalous, but I wager the ventilation down here isn't so good. Wow, I wonder why. Yeah, I, command, I recommend gas masks for any trips down here just to be on the safe side. How low are we now? We've dropped to 30 meters. And we're at a fork in the road. Team is interrupted by a noise coming from the pipes. After several seconds, it ceases. Safety's off. I don't trust those crab things. Four, you all at our rear. Yes, sir! Don't just stand there, people. Keep moving. The team continues down the fork and encounters a corridor with several doors and set into the stone. Team enters the nearest door. Workshop of some sort. Small room. Desks along the wall. I think that was paper at some point. Nothing particularly interesting. Moving on. The rest of the rooms are similar. Early workshop spaces or storage closets. The team continues down the paths for several minutes, discovering other n small, non-notable facilities, and takes a left at the next fork, into a hallway made of metallic pipes. <sighs> Ow. Something wrong? No, sorry. Implants just acting kind of wonky. It's just flickering and going static icky. Yeah, how did you... Have an inning to mind too. I asked some of the scientists, they mentioned their arguments have also been a little cranky. City obviously has a weird relationship with tech. They're fi working on figuring out, out what. Huh? Well, don't go. Fuck! Echo 3 loses his footing and is grabbed by Echo 2 as the pipe work beneath shears away and collapses. A large section falls into the abyss below, landing with, with a splash. Whoa, you good? Yeah. Jesus. Thanks. And uh, I think we discovered the sewers. That freaking reeks. Looks like the gun ground was all, for all the maintenance of the city. Construction, making those little robots essential. Well, functions keep it running. Yeah, and it looks like the underground part has an age part as well as the city above ground. Hmm. Well, we're not getting through here. Let's go back. Take the other way. For the next hour, Echo Team explores the vast hotel system, marking points of interest and unsafe routes and passages. They encounter a sector entrance that appears to be overgrown by black vines. Those plants the other guys mentioned. Echo 2 reaches out and take a sample. As touch, the entire vine crumbles into a fine black dust. He places it in a sample bag. It's dead at least, but look, look there. On the wall, a human skeleton is pinned against the concrete by the vines. Several are wrapped around the limb and several just uh, through the uh, ribs into the concrete. Ouch. 
a plant that kills. Stay sharp. And here's one of those pods. A roughly square meter sized ellipsoid pod sits on a stalk protruding from the length of the vine. A go for gives it a sharp jab with the rifle butt. It ruptures, leaking a foul smell of black liquid that dissolves the vine it comes into contact with. An object tumbles out into the puddle. Yep, quartz. How you decompose, just like Blackwood found. Echo Team continues through the tunnels, encountering a large amount of the vines with their victims. They also encounter mass graves similar to those found by Magellan on the, on the surface. These walls are all covering machinery. I just realized I could see parts through the cracks in metal. Probably more city maintenance, probably magic. You think the entire inner city is a machine? Whew. It could be. We have to do some mapping, but it wouldn't be the least believable thing here. The echo team is interrupted by another clanging through the pipe system, this one considerably closer. They raise their firearms. After a few seconds, the SCP-001 is shaped like a small monkey, leaves the pipe system on ground. At the corner of the head, it turns to look at them. Cute. I think it's asking us to follow it, sir. Seems like it. Okay. Follow the monkey, I guess. Be careful. How are we doing on time? Okay. Echo Team follows the SCP-001 instance for 35 minutes as it leads them deeper underground and through the subterranean facility, over large abysses, and through rooms that have large, complex machinery and displays. Eventually, it stops as they enter a cavernous room containing a single large object at its far end. The location is directly under the palace in the center of the city. What is that? It looks like a person. What the hell? The object is a massive block of metal covered in gears, displays, circuitry, and vacuum tubes, extending throughout the room to more machinery arranged along the walls. At the front of the block of, the, of metal, a vaguely humanoid figure jumps, juts outward, hanging from into the empty air like a figurehead. A human head, arm, and upper chest are placed on a mostly mechanical frame. It looks upward as Echo Team approaches. Firearms is. Its mouth and the, it opens its mouth and a stilted feminine voice, is with a digital edge, booms out from the machine. You have entered the gate of the West Adytum's answer, the great and holy city of Amani Ram. Welcome. There is much to discuss. Not much time left. Whew. Okay, let's finish this section then, if we can. Further inquiries from Echo Team into SCP 001 A1 were rebuffed or met with non statistical statements. It repeatedly expressed a desire to speak with the scholars, interpreted to refer to doctors Aram and Nussbaum. Echo Team spent the following hours mapping a path back to the surface, utilizing their CTMs. Upon arrival, researchers used the collected at that, it had to construct a 3 rendering a significant portion of a, under, of a Mani Ram's undercity attached below. His son a reading of a Mani Ram. I mean, if it makes sense to you, that's great. It doesn't quite make any sense to me. <sighs> Echo Team were debriefed and declared that the undercity was largely safe for exploration, far in particularly heavy corroded. Heavily corroded passages and areas infested by the anomalous is extinct vegetation species. species. Tentatively classified as SCP 001B and pods of, of acid classified as SCP 001C. Subsequent end sample analysis determined that the external skin of the pods were as an organic but calcified substance similar to flesh. Project leads Aram and Nussbaum were briefed on the discovery of SCP 001 A1 under the Alice and its request for their presence. Both agreed to conduct an interview and were escorted by a contingent 
and of arm tactical response officers to SCP-001-A1's chamber the following day. Attached transcript. And I think we're just going to read this transcript and try to finish the section before we end the video. Interviewers. Dr. Hedwig Nussbaum, Dr. Robert Aram. Subject, SAP 001A1. Begin log. The whole party enters the chamber or SAP 001A1's body components hang limply from the wall. Um, hello? Is it alive? SCP 001 A1's head switches upward. No! Welcome! Oh my gr. Uh, what are you? I am! I was! I remain! What are you? We are scholars wishing to investigate the history of this city. Scholars? SCP 001 A1's head goes limp. The wall of machinery behind her shutters for several seconds. It bursts into a flurry of activity with a shuddering, thrashing, small objects fly through the vacuum tubes. Gears can be seen turning and ticking, print of lights flicker on and off. It winds down as SCP 001 A1 raises its head again. The great grand city of Amadi Ram is home to f f four ac 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 academies, 16 schools, and scores of scholars and learned men discovering, working, blaming the gifts of God. What gives you the right to call yourself a scholar? I. Anyone who seeks knowledge can call themselves a scholar, I suppose. And we've we have not seen anyone else since we arrived here. Your army he arrived here two cycles ago. How'd you figure that out from down here? Have been observing. The automata are scholars. They are servants, soldiers, and everything else. I have learned your language from seeing your troops, the white coats and the tan patterns. I see. You see what the A is to see. They are the eyes, and I am the hard metal mine, and you have come to conquer my city. Oh, no, no, no. We are not an army. Armies have generals. Those Generals, kings, priests, three men who must be guarded. You walk in here with guards. You claim you're no general, king and queen, leaders of your people. How come we can't be priests? I am a priest. You have no shred of God in your heart. I can smell it. Then, yes, I suppose we're leaders of our people. Welcome, mechanists and scholars of the Second Spire, White City of the Broken Empire, Finger of McCain, the Allah Throne, the Great and Holy City of Amadi Ra. Whoa. I, wow, could you explain what that means? You are unaware of our, our history. How long has it been? We are not entirely sure of how long it has been since whatever happened here, but thousands of years at the minimum. We didn't think anyone would still be alive. Once again, SCP-001-A1 goes limp and, re and appears to be computing something for several seconds. I am not alive! Are you some sort of machine? Yes! You are meat! 
feet wet, dripping to the bone. I am the kiss of God, shining still and fallen. I am made in McCain's image, and you are everything I am not. Aaron raises his hand. All right, we're running in circles. Stop! Aaron freezes. Your arm! Let me see it! And SCP-001 instances inst the detached itself from the wall and approaches Aaron, lightly scaling his coat and onto his frustrated arm, inspecting it for several seconds. During this time, Aram says nothing. Eventually, he enters and drops to the floor and scares away. Amani Ram was a city of science and blessing, the McCain's gift to us, the golden medal, the Falad. It allowed us to construct wonderful things every man, woman, and child, and non binary person presented with augmentations like these, like yours, becomes something than better than human. I am not the only one. The vast majority of our personnel in the city have some form of augment. Dr. Nesbaum and all our security personnel have oculars. I have my prosthetics, and there are countless others. SCP-001 is silent. You are allowed entry to the city of Amani Ram. You make we will record our history and our creations. I will assist you. You will make sure we are not forgotten. You will be our legacy. Silence. I have not been repaired in many revolutions. There are gaps, holes, flaws in my memory, but the temple contains an in inexorable record of our city's godly creation. I will give you a translation. You will ask me for everything else. We're going to need some insight on the technology of the city. Yes! I will answer any inquiries you have, Mechanist. The automata will show you the paths of the labyrinth. They're unsafe. The real wonders of the city lie below. I thank you. We're in your debt. No! A bargain has been struck. A fair exchange. We show you and you preserve the Mechanite Empire. Go now! SCP-001 and A1 presents Dr. Aram and Nussbaum with a series of documents printed from its body. The documents were as follows, a basic translation guide from the language, it all records within a um, within a money realm are written in, coined mechanite to English with some Greek bywords. Digitized and distributed to all members of the archaeology of the archaeological team. A map of the Undercity, fully annotated with sections of interest and unpassable areas is that Echo Team had missed. Combined with the CTM map formed by Echo Team to offer a complete map of the Undercity. Full schematics of various technology is found within the city, digitized and distributed to all members of the engineering team. In addition, a small mechanical device and a non functional to provide to Dr. Aram. With the assistance provided by SCP-001-A1, research into Amani Ram began in earnest on September 12th, 1983. Here's an attached document, a moral analysis. The temple courtyard contains intricate murals depicting what Dr. Nussbaum theorizes is, is a creation myth for the, the excellent Mechanite culture. Accompanying these are flags bearing an inscription in Mechanite, while the rest of the, the archaeological team he investigated the city the rest of the city, a small team was they get translated the courtyard gravings. Side description. First relief depicts the scene of three figures wrestling in a dark void, followed by the figures falling to different corners of a slightly inaccurate The Indian continent extends much further into the, in the ocean. There's a land bridge between 
China and Japan, between China and the Japanese archipelago, and are seven inland seas of varying size. Map of Asia. One lands in the far corner of the Indian subcontinent, one lands on the coast of China, and one lands in the center of the Arabian, of the Arabian Peninsula. The final figure it dominates the rest of the scenes. It revealed to be a massive but light figure, dressed in golden armor. A shepherd, his wife, and his three lame sheep have it upon its it buried in the sand, obviously wounded. Translation of Flag Before the new pantheon, before the smoke and the singing, the old gods fought their war over nothing. They wounded each other and fell, twisting and writhing to the lowest world. Old Mekain, blessed be her name, a light in the far west under the scorching gaze of the sun. She rests in the dunes, uncovered by the flock of a shepherd, Erd Bumaro. Side description. The god reaches out and touches the shepherd and his wife. A shepherd's missing leg is replaced by a metal limb, and its shepherd's crook is replaced by a spear, both made from the golden metal. His wife's eyes glow gold, and large metal wings spring from her back. The sheep are armored and or would always resemble SCP-001 and A instances. Together, the shepherd and his wife and their flock attempt to raise the god from the sand. Translation of Flag McCain drew forth her finger and touched him. Bumaro's lame leg replaced by grief. Hadara's sight restored and all given the form of the angels. Grateful. They sought to raise her new god from her tomb, and they failed. Side description. The god get dig the god digs deeper. Laying face down in the sand, it looks up at the shepherd and drops the arm from its massive fist. The shepherd takes the armor and fashion it into a simple forge, melting and reforging it into a suit of armor in the image of the god and a massive throne. He returns to his village where the people naturally submit to him. Many are disabled and lacking limbs. They return to the resting place of the god, who touches them all in turn, replaces their shortcomings with its gifts. They rejoice, and as the god strips his armor, Uses use the metal to construct a shiny city on its back. <sighs> Translation of Flag She knew that the wound was not mortal, but crippling. She understood her fate and entrusted her legacy to Dwaro and his blood. He became the first blacksmith, shaving the metal of her body as she shaped life itself. He made himself in her image, and people were, were awed for their fate. They were uplifted beyond the chains of humanity, and from her stripped armor they raised the first city on the back of the sleeping goddess. Amani Ram, city of Falad, shining gate of the west. Machinery Log From September to February, hundreds of pieces of technology were analyzed and investigated by the engineering team. While many were too degraded to be of any practical use, they they were still highly illuminating in determining the technological level of the extent mechanite culture. A few particular early notable discoveries are attached. <sighs> Description. Okay, so these are going to be a lot of different things. First of all, Four metal poles and set into the ground of various intervals throughout the series of Amani Ram. Six dish shaped objects of meter are wide topped each pole. When an electrical current is applied to the pole, the discs begin to knock against each other, emitting radio, radio waves of unclear purpose. Currently, there appears to be some sort of conductor system for the city, possibly an attempt at creating a free wireless power system. Now, the second an, an item. Large partially subterranean greenhouses occupying a significant portion of the western district of the city. Copper pipes running on the ground on gases alternatingly cool and heat them according to valves. And greenhouses are several floors tall, utilizing novel or, or organization and irrigation techniques. Offering at maximum efficiency, a large portion of the city's utilized half a million population could have been fed by them. Third item, a series of magnetically charged rails running through the city in a loop. 
Though all the cars have been completely ruined, a flying is a specific electric charge allows rapid high-speed movement throughout through the city. Based on the lack of stations or stopping points, this is this loop to have been a hop-on, hop-off method at a mass transit at extraordinary low overhead. Next item. Small metal shields with two switches on the handle. When fully powered, one switch re rejects a rapidly oscillating energy shield that protects the burr against fast-moving kinetic objects. The shield can remain a Maintained for up to 20 minutes on a full charge. The other switch projects a skin tight shield that camouflages the wearer and their surroundings, effectively rendering them invisible. This is much more power intensive and can only be maintained for 3 to 6 minutes depending on movement. Next object is large constructs. Two in every district, set into the ground, though not part of the under the city. The locks and seals have been damaged and Inside are large machineries that have been investigated to, conta to contain radioactive material. Details are currently sealed, but the engineering team is of the opinion that these could have been functional nu nuclear or co possibly cold fusion reactors, supplying electricity to the city's power grid and power poles. And the last thing, unclear, large sections of the e undercity are inaccessible, making it thorough analysis difficult. However, the engineering team agreed agree that a significant portion of the industry appears to be one gargantuan machine incorporating mundane technology along with paratechnology. Further research is required. <sighs> In the process of research and, and exhibition, SCP-001-A instances led the archaeology a team to a structure within the southern district that appeared to be a record center, possibly a library or university. But a vast majority of the paper documents contained there were rotted and illegible. The metal and clay tablets were remar remarkably well preserved. The instances further are directed personnel to a basement section containing a large metal safe since rusted it off its hinges. But then was a catch of several dozen metal cylinders, measuring 10 centimeters in diameter imprinted with writing and mechanite. Due to their form, the language, and several other factors, only one was immediately translated. Attached document, November 1983. And the shining eye of the empire rose as Bamaro took his annoyed seat on the Ulad throne. Amani Ram rose from the sands on the back of uh, on the back of Mekane, her pieces scattered to the six winds and the five corners of the w a world. As the slaves marched on Aditam in the east and covenants were struck in the south, so too was the holiest and godliest of magics given freely to man under the watchful eye of the sun. And the sword of Mekane cut, cut a swath through the world. And all those trembled in fear until they saw the light of the ram, the greatest city of man, gifted by Mekane, but built by the hands of the workers, not the demons of the covenant, or the flesh slaves. The empire swelled, and the metal road ferried new people, and Amani Ram swelled from their presence, and the world was good as Bamar watched from his throne for his reign in of centuries. And when his reign ended and his golden body passed, the empress Hadara wept, and the city of Amani Ram wept with her, and they rested their hope unto the air, and Hashir of Amaro grew into a wise king under the auspices of his family, and gave his arm and his leg for his empire, just as his father had done. And in that way, Amaro lived on, resting in the soul of his son, and his son's son, and so on forevermore. And the Emperor Bamaro used the throne to invoke the wisdom of past lives. And that way, the Empire conquered and slew its way into the world. It was led into the continent and into the conflicts of other nations of man, bloody and brutal devastation. After several weeks of independent research, another interview was scheduled with SCP-001-A1 to seek clarification on discoveries made as well as input on technical questions. <sighs> Interviewers, 
Dr. Hedwig Nussbaum, um, um, the archaeological team in lead. Dr. Robert Aram, the engineering team lead. Dr. is a Sikrik Ekrik Blaskowitz, AT, and Sarah McK McKinnon, AT. Researcher is Bill Tins, ET, and Mohammed Zaid, ET. Subject, SCP-001-A1. Hello? SCP-001-A1? SCP-001-A1's head twitches upwards. The scholars return! It has been many cycles! I have watched! Yes, your little automata, they have been very helpful. Yes! What are these ones? Sorry. SCP-001-A1. And looks an arm at the doctors and researchers. These ones! They were not here last visit! Oh, yes, these are... Your attendants? What? You are a queen, king and a queen, you said. But Mero and Hidara had an attempt to serve them. Are these your attendants? Uh, no, it's not our missions at, at Nesbaum. Yes, that's right, our attendants. You can trust them. They're with us. SCP-001-A1's head simply nods. Do they speak? They can, and I think they've got some um, questions for you, if you're inclined to ask. Answer. You are a strange king. I will answer. Thank you, and we... Never get a god name for you, did we? You may call me Preserver. It is my function. Excellent. A pleasure to meet you, Preserver. Um, Aaron, uh, Ocean City Engineering Team. Right, yes. Hello. We've been disassembling and investigating the machinery in the city and other city. And we keep coming across this bronze alloy. It's too hard to take samples from and trying to break it has gotten us nowhere. You speak of the Falad! You've said that before, haven't you? We've seen the word in our translations. Yes, the Falad is a metal, a gift from a cane. With it, we forge our souls, our technology, our very way of life. It is the backbone of the Empire, was built on the sign of favor from God. The, we were cho the chosen people. The smiths knew how to work and melt the metal best. But every citizen was expected to know a nation of swordsmen and foundries. Um, the writings mention a Falad throne. The throne crafted by Bimaro from the first ingots of Falad. Stripped from the armor of Mechan herself, it is holy beyond holiness, divine beyond divinity. Its very presence is a symbol of power, and now it sits empty in this throne room. Devastation! Is it possible you could teach us to work the Falad? It would be great to... Yes! You will learn! Oh. Thank you, Preserver. I'll send some people down in the coming weeks. This will help. It was among the greatest boons gifted to our culture. Philod became a byword for unbreakable. Bear it well. We will. The things the Mechanites did with it are unbelievable. Advanced beyond belief. The greatest civilization that ever stood. Right, we also have questions about this Bomero. He seems to occupy a central place in the Mechanite culture, religion, history, everything. Who was he? Emperor Bomero was the first moral man to witness the majesty of the broken god in all her glory. Her son and form lay to rest under the sands. A cripple and a peasant raised from humanity by the generosity of Mechanite. 
give a new form to him, his family, his flock, his people. What would become the Mechanite Empire? Right, we gleamed as much from the creation myth. It is not a myth. Pardon? A myth is what the covenant used to scare their children. The emperor's history, his existence, is indisputable. It says in his cylinder that he reigned for centuries. They figured out cold fusion and bionics in the 17th century BCE. Is it so unbelievable they extend their lifespans? Point taken. He was given form of the sons, and his bloodline led him raised the grace army not own, all to bring order and justice to the world. <sighs> I believe that covers the emperor empire part as well. Though, could you tell us more about these other two nations of man? We've seen them referenced many times, but nothing specific. Were they related to the fall of the city? A pause as SCP-001-A1 once again appears lost in computation. I do not know. Unfortunate. But I think that's all we have for you today. I believe Hedvig's people will be coming down for more interviews with soon. That is right, trying to get a better Im image of the culture from someone who lived it. This is... acceptable! Due to the substantial amount of paratech and perihistorical findings submitted to Overwatch Command by Ivana Graham, initiative since active research began six months prior, 0511 scheduled a meeting with the in initiative leads on March 2nd, approximately eight months after the initial discovery of the mechanite culture, using the secure lay space communicator. Trans attached transcript from March, from March 1984. Lay connection to Overwatch Command established. Dr. Nosbaum um, on Dr. Aram 0511 is waiting. Please step into the communicator. Nosbaum and Aram step into step onto the metal the raised metal platform. Oh my god. The lay space cycles have cycles through several locations, settling into a view of a small asphalt parking lot in what appears to be the American Southwest. Mesas and bluffs dot the horizon, and the sun on is high in the blue sky. There are no buildings or structures in sight. There is a single black abac parked in the lot. An older man in a finely pressed gray suit stands in front of it, hands in his pockets. Hello, guys. Welcome to my little kingdom. Where are we? A lay space. A virtual projection with no data transfer delay. All, pired, all powered by the ley lines of the earth. And it costs a fortune to run. I should know. I helped design it. Well, it did, but with the recent improvements that have come out of your project, it only costs a small fortune to run. So thanks for that. Just one cha just one taste of what we've been able to do so far with SCP-001's technology. So tell me everything. Everything, sir? Everything important. I've read the reports, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Dr. Nussbaum, your progress so far? Yes, we've uncovered hundreds of tablets and engravings and mosaics across the city, and are in the process of translating them. The vast majority are simple day-to-day -day affairs, business and legal records, personal correspondence, etc. All paint the, paint the picture of, Mech of the mechanite culture, a society that was building a metropolis of the future while the glaciers from the Ice Age were still melting. They had a complex legal and justice system or not. Of a family structure incorporating distant cousins into large households and clans. Yes, anthropology. Fascinating. I was wondering if you had figured out any more of their later history. 
later history, sir? What happened to them between the technological and the archaeological re reports? This was as a culture that was undisputed as the most advanced in the world at the time. But they also keep mentioning this war with the other two nations. This additum of the Na Alka Empire and the Mamju efforts as the capital of the Davite Covenant. What that signals to me, and, and do tell me for wrong, please, is that these two empires were each powerful enough to withstand a war with the Mechanite culture. And depending on what happened to Amon the Graham, bringing it to its knees. I suppose so, sir, but the Aiken temples do not give a precise location for the other two cities. And if we do want to find them, well, a location could be anywhere in a shipping record in a letter to a distant cousin. That's fine, but we need to figure out how this city died. I'd be pretty goddamn willing to bet the, at the things found in the other city are yeah, related. The flesh thingies and the plants. Nothing has been confirmed yet, though it does seem quite likely. <laughs> well, in the meantime, see what you can get out of that robot down there. What's its name? Preserver, SCP-001-A1. It's not a robot, it's an artificial intelligence. Whatever it is, it's hiding something from you. And speaking of which, this place had artificial intelligence when the Persians were figuring out irrigation. Far from the only breakthrough. If we can harness the air cold fusion technology, their bionics, the powers of reverse engineering any one of their and innovations could change the world. Well, okay, slow your roll. We don't know what happened to them. Like I said, for all we know, their technology led them to their downfall. So let's wait before we are getting any ideas of dragging the world into the 21st century early. Let's focus on changing the foundation first, right, Robert? Yes, sir. Good, but I suppose that if you want to improve the variety of research, you're going to need more people. Yes, I have a list of requisition and requests. All sorts of machinery, excavation equipment, hazmat equipment, and scientific machinery. Funding, of course. Naturally, forward it to my fa- them. We'll take care of everything you need. We're very excited about this over at Site 01, you know. Very excited to see what comes out of a monogram next. We also need people. Right, I, now there's how many people? Right now there's about 50 of us and the security, but we're stretched thin. But we're stretched thin to explore a whole city. I've run the numbers, and 200 additional personnel would give us the arms we need. That's a lot of arms, Robert. Not something I could make happen with a snap of my fingers. I have a list of names I can forward. And it is a lot, but we barely scratched the surface of what the Mechanites left us. And already are reaping the rewards. Surely it's worth it? Can't disagree there. You'll have your people within two months. Might need to consider expanding. I'm inclined to agree, which is why I want to request your permission to see if we can get certain aspects of the city working again. Like what? The power grid, for one. We've been off the doubt pretty well, and it's surprisingly intact. I'm confident that with the extra arms and O01A1's help, we could get the reactors online within the month. Hmm. The better situated the city is, the more we can learn about the machinery, and the more we can improve the foundation. I suppose so. Permission granted, just stay safe. We're still working blind here. You both have your orders anyway. Good luck. 0511 opens the car door and gets inside, starting the engine. Simultaneously, the lay space collapses into darkness, and airman and dust bombs step backwards. Lay connection to Overwatch Command terminated. End log.
Well, that was twice as long as I wanted it to be. Anyway, that was part two of uh, Amani Ram. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. We'll be starting in tomorrow's video at part at section one point five. If you so, until then, goodbye.